Hi folks and welcome to another episode of the County Sheep Podcast. This is episode 14. My name is Ruth and I'll be your host and my podcast is mostly about crocheting, knitting and spinning and other fibery things that I get up to. I'm coming to you from my small little corner in Vermont and uh, today it is snowing. Actually, I should be saying it's snowing and then sometimes we have bright sunshine and then it goes back to snowing. So it's kind of a crazy weather day here in Vermont. But we expect that at the beginning of the kind of wintry season, even though it hasn't, we haven't had the winter solstice yet. We do have um, lower temperatures and um, last week, right before Thanksgiving, we had some really slushy snow that was quite slippery on the roads. Um, so you had to be quite careful um, when you were on the roads uh, driving around. But uh, yeah, but we're used to it. We have snow tires on our cars and uh, so we're kind of, it's just that initial snow of the um, season that you have to get your legs back under you in terms of driving. But that's enough about the weather. Um, we are post Thanksgiving and uh, post Black Friday, small, small Business Saturday, and Cyber Monday. Today is Giving Tuesday. I'm recording a little later than I usually do. Um, I went to my part-time job yesterday and today, so it took up a chunk of the day. So I'm here late afternoon you could probably see some of the wintry stuff that's out there from one of my windows here in my sitting room. Um, this is a slanted window over here and it has quite a bit of snow on it already so it's providing a little bit of filtered light. Um, so I hope it's not too much. I hope it's not uh, blowing out too much. Um, but anyway, I have a load of stuff here to show you. Um, and go over. I have some knitting. I have some crocheting. I don't have any spinning this time around. Um, and you'll know why in a few minutes when I get to talking about all of my makes. Um, I do have at the end some Advent things that have come my way and I'd like to share those with you and um, yeah, and see how we can sh I can share that with you for uh, the Advent season coming going forward. I'm just going to adjust the camera just slightly because I think I'm getting a little bit of a glare there. I think that's a little better. Alrighty, so I'm going to jump right in and I'm going to address the elephant in the room, which is what I have on. And yes, folks, finally, <laughs> you've seen this since the beginning of the podcast. I have completed my pressed flowers cardigan and right down to the wire with this one. I was sewing on buttons yesterday. So I'm going to just um, sit up just a, w a wee bit here so you can kind of get a look at it. So hopefully the lighting is good for the colors. It's been such a joy to see this come together. And also the fit is just wonderful. Um, it's a bottom-up cardigan and I'll just turn around so you can see the back a little bit. Hopefully you'll be able to see it from this angle. It has a little bit of a drop shoulder to it. So you can see that right here. And it's a mosaic crochet, um, mosaic knitting pattern. It is by Amy Christopher's. I got myself situated here. Things are dropping on the floor already. <laughs> Wouldn't be a podcast if it wasn't on the floor. Um, so yeah, uh, some of the specs, pressed flowers cardigan by Amy Christopher's. Um, I use needle sizes three and five, which are the, the needle sizes given for the pattern. I happened to get gauge with that and I just decided that was probably the first and last time I'll ever get gauge from the pattern itself. Uh, and the yarn, as you've 
heard me speak of again and again and again <laughs> is from one of my own sheep uh, who's no longer with us, Fergus. He was a, a Morit um, male Shetland who uh, was neutered and we call those weathered. And he has this nice, he had this nice chocolate brown color. And then the variegated yarn is from Feederbrook Farm. Uh, it's their DK Entropy base. And the actual colorway is called Force, F-O-R-C-E. And like I said, the construction was bottom up. Um, the one thing I kind of deviated from the pattern, although the pattern doesn't really uh, give you set instructions on how to cast off, um, they just tell you to cast off. So for the cuffs, I, 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 in the past I've come to realize that I really don't like a lot of binding around my cuffs. So I uh, did a Kitchener sewn bind off. And I think in some walks they call it um, like an Italian bite off um, but it does take some time and some patience but once you learn the ri you know learn the technique you just kind of get into a rhythm with it and I don't answer the phone I don't do anything else while I'm doing a sewn bind off because until it's done but as you can imagine um, it started for you know the the front bands all the way around the neck and down it was quite a few stitches to sew off on a bind off. Um, and I think the last time I podcast, I still had one more sleeve to go and then um, the button bands and the neck. So um, there was quite a bit of um, material yet left to make on this cardigan uh, last time. So um, spent a lot of good time trying to get this one done. So, and I am proud of it. I really am. And it's so well Fitting. I, I can't recommend this pattern enough. Um, I do have quite a bit of the Feederbrook Farm yarn left over, as you can see here. And I will tell you what I'm going to, what I have in mind for this later on in the podcast. So, but something great, because this is too, this stuff is just luscious. And it's so, uh, it's such a random spin and beautiful colors and working with it, I just, I need to use the rest of it up. And that's just the way it is. <laughs> it's too good to go in the, in the pile of leftovers, in other words. So, so that's uh, my plan for that. And since I'm already talking about knitting, I'm going to move into uh, my other whips for knitting, and then I'll move into crochet. So a little flip-flop. Usually I start with crochet and then move into knitting. But since I had this on, I decided to start with the knitting. So yeah, pressed flowers cardigan, thumbs up. It, try it. You'll love it. <laughs> um, so my next whip, I have a whip now. This is an FO. I've got this whip here. And it didn't... This whip didn't see too much love, maybe about 10 rows. Um, these are the Swakatu socks, and it's a pattern out of 52 weeks of socks volume one. And since there's a volume two out now for 52 weeks of socks, this pattern is actually available on Ravelry now. It's been released. And so, it's a textured pattern, and um, the yarn that I'm using is from Dirty Water Dye Works. And <clears throat> I'll just show you the label here. Actually, let me just show you the whole thing. Dirty Water Dye Works. And it is their Flex um, base which is 85% superwash merino and 50% donical nep. And it's 438 yards to 100 grams, so nice sock weight. And it's in the dusk colorway. And I'm using a needle size zero, because I tend to be a little bit of a, new, a loose knitter, and so I really need to go down a needle size, I find. So this is kind of a textured sock. I'm not sure if you can see that. Yeah, I think you can. 
little bit of texture there so and I'm really enjoying the toe up method of uh, constructing socks because uh, once you cast off you're done so um, and also I find two at a time like this you get um, twins rather than sisters <laughs> for socks. I find if I do one sock at a time, the second sock always turns out a little different. So so yeah, the sole of the foot is all just stockinette. So there you can see that beautiful flecked tweedy type of texture. And yeah, and here's the here's the front. So So yeah, so these are really a neat kind of knit to take along, um, you know, uh, it's very portable. I have mine in my woolly thistle bag, a small bag here, and uh, yeah, I, I put that in and a few little notions and I'm good to go. So yeah, that's um, also um, the texture. I, I mentioned, I think the last time, it's all twisted stitches, so no cable needle needed. Um, and so that's what kind of makes it fun too, because you get that, excuse me, that twisted stitch texture without having to mess with a cable needle. All right, so that are, that's my socks. And then I also wanted to give you an update on my sock head hat, which um, I think I mentioned a couple episodes ago. This is a project that I'd like to take to my knitting group. Um, they tend to be a very chatty group, and the topics range all over the all over the place. And um, and I was actually at um, at the knitting group last night. We meet at the library, and we were having a ball. I mean, we were just talking about all sorts of stuff. So anyway, um, so when that ha you know, I like to be able to uh, be a part of the conversation. Not that I can't with most of my knitting. But I find if I have to really concentrate on something, I can't speak at the same time. So, but anyway, this is a pattern. I'll show you from Kelly McClure. It's called the Sock Head Hat. Very popular pattern, and it is a free pattern. So I'm not giving away any of the secret sauce here. She um, very nicely puts a chart here in the pattern. Uh, for sizes baby to extra large and it kind of gives you the, the cast on stitches the inches of ribbing the inches of stock knit stitch total inches before decreasing for every single one of these sizes uh, she gives you the finished width if, it, uh, if it's head size what head size it fits uh, grams of <clears throat> grams of um, yarn used and also the yardage used which is both of those are very important pieces of information. Um, so anyway, uh, yeah, and this one piece of paper is all you need to know about this hat. <laughs> I am using, obviously, um, it's meant for one skein of sock yarn. And I am using a sock yarn from Needles at the Ready Gentlemen down in Connecticut. They are hand dye yarn. This is on their Achilles sock base, which is a 75% superwash merino and a 25% nylon. 462 yards to 100 grams, four ply fingering weight. And the colorway is called Florals for Spring Groundbreaking. <laughs> that is their, I believe this is their, I, they changed their yarn label now since the, um, I got this. They have a different yarn label, so. Um, and then there's uh, their information on the back. That reminds me, I need to give out my information for people so that you know where to find me. I, I really neglect to do that sometimes, <laughs> or all the time, so I'm going to get better at that. All right, so before I show this to you, I believe I used the suggested needles which are 2.5 millimeter, 16 inch circulars. It's a, actually no, it's 
US 2.5 and the millimeter size is 3. And so this is where I'm at. I did a whole bunch of ribbing. And, and now there's a whole bunch of stockinette going on. But it's kind of cool the way it's going there. So yeah, very, very cool. And like I said, it's one of those mindless um, projects that you can just take along because all it is right now is knit, 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 knit. That's all. Um, you just keep going around and around and around until you reach uh, the allotted inches for the stockinette part and then you start to decrease. So it makes a nice hat that kind of sits, the band sits around here on your forehead and then the rest of it is kind of floppy. And so it makes for a nice a nice fitting and warm hat so and I love little funky hats like this I just I, I love colorful hats I mean why wear a one color hat if you don't have to um, but I thought I'd give you a little update on my sock head hat I know um, Kevin and Ray at the Needles at the Ready podcast I know at least Ray has made a couple of the sock head hats so he's a real fan of that particular pattern all right, so what's up next? Oh, I guess we can we can move into crochet. I don't think I have any more knitting to show. Nope, that's it. Uh, let me just give you an update on the Fealty Hap. This is a project that I chose for the uh, crochet along that Mort Magazine is running. And I'm wondering if any of you are doing that uh, crochet along. You can pick any pattern from any issue of Morit Magazine and just uh, kind of knit along with everybody else. And I picked the Fealty Hap, and this is a pattern by Faye Dashper Hughes. It's in the number five issue of Morit Magazine, so just the, the very recent one that just came out. Um, the theme for that magazine issue was the Highland Retreat. And this is where I'm at with the, with the hap. I'm using an Italian cashmere. This is a four millimeter hook that I'm using. This is a lace weight. And it's coming out very nicely. I, I just, I think this is such a nice ch uh, project to choose for the type of yarn which has been sitting in my stash for five years now. I can't believe it's been five years since I was in, in Italy. It's just, it boggles my mind. Uh, going on six. <laughs> so anyway, uh, yeah. So I think I've shown this before. It's just got a nice lacy texture, nice lacy stitch there. And this is another one of those um, mindless projects, really, because once you learn the pattern, it's very a very easy repeat. So really, really enjoying that. But like I said, it hasn't really seen a lot of love because I've given a lot of love to this cardigan that I'm wearing and um, the next thing I want to show you. But yeah, I recommend that hap as well. And... That's a fun project, so. All right, so my next make is a whip in progress, you know, a, a work in progress, a whip. And this is my Kitzbühel cardigan. This is a pattern by Sandra Gutierrez of uh, Nomad Stitches. Um, I don't have a really good picture of her in this cardigan. All of the ones that I have here are kind of small. Um, but this was a project that I started quite a while ago, and it's been languishing like nobody's business. And why, I, I don't know. You know, you fall in and out of love with things, but anyway, let me sh try to show you it's it's not a really good picture of the detail that's on this cardigan. She does hers. And this is a by the way, let me back up. This is a, a standard 
mosaic crochet technique. Um, so you're using two colors. Uh, and she does use two colors in her cardigan. I elected to use two different colors because I wanted to use up some of my stash. And I'm happy to say this thing got a lot of love as well. Um, I think I was just on a cardigan finishing kick this, these past two weeks. But I want to show this to you. It's, it's not done yet, um, but I have finished the body and I'm almost finished with the bands, um, the edging that goes around the bottom, around the neck, and the button bands. So, so let me just kind of give you a a look at that. So you can really see the mosaic technique there. There's a different stitch pattern up here for the yoke and then a second stitch pattern here going down from the yoke for most of the body. So I've got the body finished, yay, and also I started this wonderful edging around the bottom that Sandra really just walks you through. And it's it's kind of a, a really nice finish. It's a nice finish to this cardigan. Now I elected, as you can see, to use two different background colors. There's kind of this purpley uh, background up here. Excuse me. The, uh, the word I'm, I'm, I'm looking for is variegation. So it's a variegated purple yarn and then this is kind of has like an aqua green to it. And I know I neglected to to state what I was using last time. This is called um, this yarn, uh, the main yarn. So this um, this kind of beigey color is from Earl Grey Fiber Company and they call it the Matcha, Matcha Sport so it's M-A-T-C-H-A Sport Yarn um, 3 ply superwash merino and it's 100 grams for 328 yards and I'm able to get gauge with this even though it's not a fingering weight yarn which is what the pattern calls for but the colorway is called bisque. And then for the yoke of the sweater, for the second color, I am using a yarn from La Jola, or La Yola. And it's 100% superwash merino wool, 400 yards, 215 grams. So once again, a true fingering. And the um, colorway name is Purple Haze. So that's their information there for that yarn. Bajola. And this is the yarn that is in the background. Now I might take this down the sleeves. So I have it divided up in two equal balls, some, somewhat equal, um, to take it down the sleeves just a little bit. And because um, I really like this color. And then I'll continue on with the color I have for, ooh, I don't know if I have it up here, it might have, it might have stayed downstairs with the rest of what I have, but, I don't know, here it is. This is what I have for the um, body of the sweater, and I'm trying to find the ball band right now, but I, it seems to have flown the coop. If I can find it, I will um, put it in... Oh, no, here it is. Whew. Bad podcasting here. <laughs> um, let me see if I can get this apart. Some of these ball bands are put together with, like, cement. This is from Haynes House Yarns. And it's called Spontaneous Concert. Where'd it go now? Ah... <laughs> uh. All right, you got true life going on here. All right, Spontaneous Concert. Uh, this is their Haynesville fingering. It's 100% superwash merino, 
400 yards to 100 grams. So, so it's got this lovely, lovely aqua. I mean, it's mostly the green in there, but then you also get these pops of purple, which I thought it would look great with purple that's up in the yolk. So, and uh, so it, it kind of um, kind of puts my own spin on the pattern, if you will. So yeah, so this is going to be worked into the sleeves as well. So stay tuned for the progress on that. Um, some of the other specs, I just want to make sure I told you everything on that. Um, I, I really wanted to emphasize what kind of yarns I used this time because I know I didn't say it the last time. Um, yeah, and so, so yeah, I think that's all I have to say about that. I think it's a four millimeter hook I'm using. It seems to be my favorite size hook to use. You know, it feels good in the hand and it works well with a fingering weight yarn. Uh, no, this is a 4.5, so 4, 4.5, yeah, those are good hook sizes for me um, to work cardigans in, and uh, so yeah, Purple Haze and Spontaneous Concert, I love the names. <laughs> so I'm going to make sure I keep everything together here because I find that's the way that I don't create messes in my life, so... All right, sorry for the rustling. Anyway, I wanted to um, just touch on a few um, near future whips for crochet because um, it is gift giving season. Um, and I have uh, a couple of men in my life, um, my husband, my brother, and my brother-in-law, who are always kind of difficult to shop for. <laughs> um, but I think all three of them enjoy having warm feet. And so I um, came across a pattern this week uh, from Marta Mitchell of Marta Mitchell Design. She's a crochet designer, very good crochet designer. And um, I watch her here. Um, you should go over and watch her channel. She's wonderful. She lives in Scotland. Um, but I came across her pattern and it's called the Banjo Socks. They are... Um, Socks that are done in a worsted weight yarn, which is great um, for like house socks, you know, socks you're going to wear around the house. And I thought this would be a good, a good pattern. I'm not, I'm, I'm going to do them in one color um, because guys in color, you have to be careful. Um, you don't want to do anything too frilly or, you know, pink. <laughs> Um, so anyway, these are the banjo socks from Marta Mitchell, and as you see, she did them in stripes. But I have some special yarns. I, like I said last time, I did some serious stash reorganization and came across some nice browns. I have this one. This is from Universal Yarn. It's called their Deluxe Worsted Tones, and it's 100% wool. Let me see what the specs are on it. It's uh, 100 grams, 220 yards. Yeah, and so there's that. Nice variegation. A good manly type of color. This is also by Universal Yarns. This is just a different colorway. Um, they don't name their colorways. There's just numbers. This first one was 348. And this one was is 343. So a little bit more white in that, but still with the brown. And then finally, um, this is some of my own wool. Um, I've been I've been holding on to this for a long time. Um, this is from also from the same sheep that I had this wool from. This is from Fergus, and this is a worsted weight yarn. So, toward the end of his life, he didn't really change too much in color from year to year. Um, so, as you can see, this is this. The lighting's not going to really tell you, but they they're very similar. Um, because sometimes when the locks, the the wool locks on their back, they can get um, 
kind of sun suntanned you know just like your skin can and so their tips get a little bit lighter than the rest of the um, the actual um, wool so but he stayed pretty consistent yeah so so three different yarns and I have a feeling um, this is going to work up pretty quickly. Um, she uh, suggests, let's see what kind of hook, she suggests a 5.5, so yeah. And uh, so I'm looking forward to that, so hopefully I'll have a pair or two ready uh, in two weeks time. So my little gift knitting, I don't do anything big. For gifts I have a lot of shawls that I've made in the past and I tend to kind of do a clean out of shawls every December and the, um, the women in my life all get a shawl so <laughs> so lucky them um, I, I don't tend to to be a big shawl person you know I, I tend as I've said my, my heart is with my sweaters so um, being in Vermont and all that too. Shawls, shawls have a use here in Vermont, trust me. Um, but I tend, when I tend to be cold, the, the first thing I grab is a sweater, so. So yeah, I thought I'd share the banjo socks with you. And then the, the other thing I, I wanna do, um, I showed you the leftover uh, entropy yarn from this uh, pressed flowers cardigan. And I came across a pattern from Jimmy Bean's Wools, and it's a free pattern, God bless them. It's for a beanie, and this one's called the Gem Square Beanie. And that's what it looks like, and it's done in pieces, and I just thought, I have the perfect yarn for this. <laughs> so why not, right? I love wearing colorful hats, as you know. And so um, this is gonna be perfect. I can't wait to start this one, but I have to, slow my roll a little bit <laughs> to get my Christmas knitting done or Christmas crocheting done first but there's another picture of it it's kind of got a round top to it and then these are all kind of squares and rectangles you make so great yeah check it out Jimmy B it's on Jimmy Bean's Wool's website and um, yeah definitely definitely gonna do that so very excited about that particular project so all right so moving on to other things um, my spinning like I said um, I haven't uh, spent a lot of time with the spinning this Saturday I'm going to kind of a holiday open house at the Coolidge um, it's kind of a uh, it's kind of a park yeah it's it's a history type park here in Vermont Coolidge uh, was president of the United States I think the only president from Vermont so we have a his homestead has been set aside and preserved and I'm going to join the six loose ladies on Saturday and spin for about four hours up there at their ho at the holiday open house at the Coolidge uh, homestead so that will be fun and I'll be able to get some spinning done <laughs> of an excuse to spin so um, so that'll be great. I wanted to talk about uh, the season coming up, the Advent season, of course, um, and I can't resist a good Advent calendar, and I just uh, wanted to share one with you that I'll be opening every day, and as well as um, two other little kits that I, I have. One I did not bring up, but I will, I'll just mention it. Uh, it's actually called the Good Tidings Kit. Uh, and it's from Barrett Wools, who uh, is on, uh, that Barrett Wools is owned by Susan B. Anderson. Um, if you recognize her name, she is a designer of all all sorts of cuteness. Uh, she's known for her little animals and the wonderful construction of her little animals, as well as she makes garlands for every season um, and dolls and gnomes and she's just great you have to check her out but her company's name is Barrett Wool Company and for the Advent season she came out with the Good Tidings box um, and I did not bring it up here 
um, but it was a bo it's a box full of their yarn and then um, they emailed a whole bunch of little patterns and basically their ornaments um, really quick items you can make with their yarn um, just kind of try out their yarn and that sort of thing so I got that and um, I'll try to share that on the next time around um, and then I also got a full advent calendar and this is from Jimmy Beans Wool so here's this baby <laughs> um, and it's got a nice door on it let me see if we can open the door yeah. okay open the door and there are all the drawers for the advent season so uh, plus a little poetry over here <laughs> Um, this is made for the crafter, so um, I have no idea what's going to be in it, So, and that's part of the surprise, right? So hopefully I'll be able to share with you what's going on with this and uh, along the way, and uh, hopefully we'll get to enjoy opening that together. It's, it, this box is nice and sturdy. It's just it's kind of hefty, too. <laughs> Um, and finally, I, um, I listened to Ellie over at Craft House Magic here on YouTube, and she is, she does all the, all the things too. She does knitting, crocheting, lots of, so she's a sewist. Um, so yeah, she, she really gets into Advent and she has a vlogmas and, um, she has a little boy and her husband and they both participate in the vlogmas. So um, if you have time, go over and check her out. She's great. Um, but she also has a shop. And I haven't opened this yet. I've just taken the brown wrapping off of the outside. And this is basically a um, mystery sock along. Um, but I guess uh, she emails you the pattern, and I've already received the pattern, so I do know what they look like. There's a, a photo on the pattern. So there's no mystery there, but um, skein of yarn, which I haven't opened yet, which, you know, I have an idea what it, you know, what it looks like. Um, there's a little, a little thank you gift here. Um, she wrote a nice little card. And then this is one of her hand sewn bags. Um, and I don't plan on opening any of this until December 1st. I'm going to try to be a good girl and not give in to the temptation, which I know some people do. They get like their advents and they can't resist tearing into them, but <laughs> I like to wait until at least December. My house isn't decorated for Christmas yet. I mean, that usually sh should come first. You know, you need a tree to put this all under after all. Um, so anyway, so yeah, one of her bags, one of her, um, kits of yarn to make a pair of socks and it's the Rock and Robin socks and I know Claudia uh, from the, uh, the Sunbird Crochet Project was just uh, telling us about how much she loves Robins and Claudia I'm just going to say I am so surprised and so warmed I received your card today it was such a surprise and talk about Advents. Germans can really do Advent. I think they invented it. Um, this little card, I don't know if you're going to be able to see it, has little doors, numbered doors, to open every day for Advent. I can't tell you how tickled I was to open this card from Claudia. Thank you, Claudia. You're the best. <laughs> Um, I don't know how you did it, but you found me. <laughs> and um, I can't wait to get started with this. This is just, uh, this just warms my heart. And this is, um, I got to say, one of, the, one of the many things that I'm grateful that I started podcasting and I got a boost from Claudia to, to go, go ahead and do it and jump in. And I've enjoyed it so much. I've enjoyed reading your comments. I've enjoyed being a part of this community. It has been so enlightening and fun and I just, I enjoy sharing. I hope you enjoy what I share with you and, um, and hopefully, you know, like I can keep, keep going with it because it, 
it really it spurs me on to be creative and to keep going with with all sorts of things all sorts of projects so thank you Claudia and thank you all of my viewers um, like I said if you if you like my content please subscribe um, and I usually put a new episode up every two weeks I wanted to give you some more information about uh, how you can contact me. Um, let's see, I wrote it down here somewhere. Yes, you would think. Here we go. I am Rabbit Lady on Ravelry. Uh, my Instagram is Counting Sheep at Sunrise Hill. <laughs> and on Facebook, I'm Counting Sheep. And then my email is Sunrise Hill Farm and Crafts at gmail.com. So if you need to get a hold of me, that's kind of the info I have for that. And um, so I think that's going to do it for me for this podcast, this, this episode. Um, until next time, take care of yourself, keep crafting, and I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye-bye now.